1 for 1, we have x squared minus x minus 20 equal to 0. Now, it's, it's about a quadratic equation as usual. Right. Now, you can factorize it. But as I said, if you can't, then use the quadratic point. So this is a very, it's a, it's a grade 9 question. So it's x minus 5 times x plus 4 equal to 0. Right? Once you get your factor, you equate each factor to 0. You equate each factor to 0, so this becomes x equal to 5 or x equal to negative 4. Right? So this is straightforward. Okay? Then the next one, 1.1.2, we have 2x squared minus 11x plus 7 equal to 0. Again, I'm sure you can see here that you have to give your answer correct to two decimal places. Right? So, quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. So your A is 2, B is minus 11, C is 7. And you are using the quadratic formula x equal to minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Okay, so we substitute that into that quadratic formula. So on the next page, I'll write x equal to minus. Now, b is negative, so we put the b value in brackets, plus or minus, minus 11 squared, minus 4 times a, now our a is the 2, and c, c is 7, all over 2 times 2, so you get one mark. For using the quadratic formula correctly and substituting correctly. So this becomes x equal to 11 plus or minus, that's 121 minus 8 times 7, that's 56. This is all over 4. Okay, 121 minus 56, so that should give me 65. So I'll get 11 plus or minus 65. All over four. Can someone simplify that? I mean, get x equal to what? Four point seven seven or one point seven two. So this is straightforward. Okay, this is straightforward. Right. So you must know this. How to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula? Yes. Okay, the math allocation, right? Since it was already in standard form, this one is already in standard form, no math for standard form, right? So it's three marks. So the first mark is substituting correctly into the project formula. When you say correct substitution, it means you write the formula correctly, you substitute correctly, okay? Then the other marks are going to be for the two x values. Which means this will, this will be working out that there are no marks allocated. Okay. Then the next question is a quadratic inequality. Quadratic inequality. Right? So first thing, if, if the quadratic inequality is not in standard form, convert it to standard form. So this will be 5x squared minus 21x plus 4 is greater than 0. Now it's in standard form. Okay? From here, you can use the quadratic formula to solve. Okay? Or to determine the critical values. So, my critical values are going to be x equal to, I'm going to substitute into the quadratic formula, my, my b is negative 21, so that's minus. This time I'm not factorizing. It's my choice. Right? Plus or minus b squared, that's minus 21 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 5 times c, 
C, which is 4, all over 2 times 5. Remember, I'm, I'm trying to find the critical value. Right? So this becomes x equal to 20, that will be 21 plus or minus. There are no marks for what I'm doing here. This is, okay, what's 21 squared? Minus 21 squared. It's 401. 441 minus, that's 20, that will be 80. So over 10. This is the same as 21 plus or minus. Yeah, 441 minus 80. Three sixty one. Okay, three sixty one. So you end up getting x equal to twenty one plus or minus ninety over ten. Eventually, your two x values, the critical values. Okay, I want you to deal with that. I'm not using it out there, so some of the steps that I'm putting in, if you are using it, you are not necessary. Alright? So 21 plus 19, between 40 divided by 10, I'll get 4. Alright? The other one, 21 minus 19, that's a 2, 2 divided by 10, that will give me 1 over 5. Alright? Now, you can also get those values if you, if you can manage to factorize it. But if you can't, Use the quadratic form. Okay? So, when you see that quadratic inequality, you should not get scared because you saw a 5 here, you saw a minus 21. Mm -hmm. Yes? The sign change, the sign change if you divide by a negative coefficient. No. For this type of equation, we do, we don't need that skill. Alright? So let's use triangle error now. So the number line, we are going to have 1 over 5 here and then a 4. Right? So this will be x greater than 4. Between 1 over 5 and 4, that would be 1 over 5 is less than x is less than 4. This will be x is less than 1 over 5. The way you solve the quadratic inequality is the same for any question. You have to find, you have to make sure your quadratic inequality is in standard form. You either factorize or use the quadratic formula. Then find the critical values. Then use the number line to determine the solutions. It's the same for any question. So if I choose 5, then if I put 5 here, okay, then someone with the calculator can open 5 there. You end up getting 24. Is 24 greater than 0? The answer is a yes. Right? So this will be a solution. Then between 1 over 5 and 4, let's choose 1 there. Put the 1 here. Put the one there, put the one there. What do you get? You get 5 minus 21 plus 4. You get what? 5 minus 21 plus give you six, minus 16. Minus 16 plus 4 gives you minus 12. Is minus 12 greater than 0? No. So that's not the solution. Now, in most cases, if not all cases, if the first interval is correct, the last one to your far left will be correct. If the middle one is correct, this one here and that one will be incorrect. Right? But let's test it. Choose the value which is less than 1 over 5, put 0. Right? So put 0 here, put 0 there, we will get 0 here. Then you left with a 4. 4 is greater than what? 0. So that's the solution. Therefore, your answers will be x is less than 1 over 5 or x than four. Then it's the same every year since 2014 when CAP started. This is how you can answer the question on quadratic inequalities. It's not going to change. Okay? Generally, the mark allocation one here, one there. 
the main the mass system is allocated for the method you used. That is the number line. Right? It's five months. So how you determine your um, fit for values, right? The fit for values. So you may get a mark here and also you can give you a mark there. Right? If you factorize, then you get mark for the factors and then mark for the fit for values. Right? It's not difficult at all. It's not. Right? Let's so move on to the next question. Now, this is an exponential equation. Remember, your trial paper is an exponential equation. This question here also has an exponential equation. The way you do the questions is exactly the same. So, first thing here is to take the. Before you, you start answering the question, you must see that, okay, I have a, an exponent which is 2x there. Which means somehow you create a quadratic equation. This 2x here is a clue that you have to create a quadratic equation and solve it. Right? So first thing, I'll take the 16 to the left, so I'll get 2 to the power of 2x minus 6 times 2 to the power of x minus 16 equal to 0. Then the next step is to split this. Okay? So when I split it, I'll write this 2 to the power of x squared minus 6 times 2 to the power of x minus 16 equal to 0. I, I hope that you can see what I did from here to there. The objective is to create that quadratic equation. This exponential equation, it's a complex one, so you cannot solve it directly. You have to have some kind of manipulation. Then from here now, I can say let a be equal to the power of a. Okay? So you get 2, this bit, so it becomes k squared. Okay? So this becomes k squared minus 6k minus 16 equal to 0. Now, when you get here, please, 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 I'm going to repeat it more than once. If you can't factorize, use the quadratic formula. You will never go wrong. So, this becomes k minus 8 times k plus 2. You can't factorize, use the quadratic formula. So, you get k equal to 8 or k equal to minus 2. Okay, so when, when k is equal to 8, right, remember we say k is equal to 2 to the power of x here. So 8 will be equal to 2 to the power of x, which means 2 to the power of 3 will be equal to 2 to the power of x, therefore x will be 3. Then, when k is minus 2, it means minus 2 will be equal to 2 to the power of x. We can't solve this. Okay, therefore x is undefined. What this means is you only have one solution, which is x equal to 3. Okay. Are you following that? There's only one solution to that uh, exponential equation, which is x equal to 3. Are you following? Now, these questions that I'm doing now, sometimes they are called bread and butter. Everybody can eat bread, and everyone can eat, put the butter on the bread, and then you eat it. Okay, they are bread and butter questions. Simultaneous. Right, this, this one now, y is not the subject in the linear, and x is not the subject in the linear. So I'll call that one equation 1, this one equation 2. So first thing, let's make y the subject. It's easier to make y the subject because the coefficient of y in the linear is 1. So we can say y will be equal to 2x minus 1. So for this question, you get one mark for that. Okay? Yes, you get one mark for making y the subject. Right? Then we substitute it equation 2. So what that means is where there is y here, 
we are going to put 2x minus 1. You know, I still don't understand how a person can fail to substitute. Good. Substitution is like me coming to where you are sitting and say, stand up and sit where you are sitting. That's substitution. That's very easy. So this will be x squared minus x times 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 squared. Please don't forget this y squared. Squared, this is equal to 7. Everything I'm going to do below, below this step here is grade 9 work. Soil, simplifying, grouping like 10, we did that in lower grade. So this becomes x squared minus 2x squared plus x. This one here, you have to use foil. But if you know how to use foil, you can also do it in the head, but I don't want to do that, so it will be 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. You know what? Sometimes you learners, you write things that are crazy. You know that, you know that this question is, Someone will say 2x times, times 2 or 2x squared. They'll put 4x squared. Then they'll say 1 squared. That will be the negative one. But that's not correct. The answer is not a binomial, it's a trinomial. Okay? So this will be equal to 7. So let me simplify this. So you get x, well, uh, x squared minus 2x squared will give you minus x squared plus x. 2x times 2x, that will give me 4x squared. 2x times minus 1, that's 2x. Minus 1 times 2x, minus 2x. Minus 1 times 1, positive 1, equal to 7. Right? Then the like terms. You should not make unnecessary silly mistakes. You need to concentrate. Okay? When you are doing this. Minus x squared plus 4x squared, that's 3x squared. I have seen learners, a question like this, a person will make a silly mistake in addition or subtraction. Right? Concentrate. Minus x squared plus 4x squared, 3x squared. x minus 2x minus 2x, that will give you minus 3x. Then you take that 7 and bring it to the left. So 1 minus 7 will give you minus 6. This is equal to 0. In most, in fact, in all cases, these questions here, you can factorize them. If you can't factorize them, you made the mistake somewhere. So I, I'm sure you can see that there's a common factor here. So that's a 3. Okay? What this means is I can divide both sides by 3, so my quadratic equation becomes x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0. And I can easily factorize this. So that will give me x minus 2 times x plus 1. If you can't factorize, use the quadratic formula. Don't waste time trying to figure it out, and you can't. Use the quadratic formula. Right? So this becomes x equal to 2 or x plus or x equal to minus 1. Never ever think that a question like this you get decimals as your x values. No. The moment you, you solve this a question like this, you, you get here and then you handle that decimal. That should be a clue to you that you made a mistake somewhere on top. An addition mistake, subtraction mistake, multiplication mean, um, the mistake. Then after this, let's substitute back into that equation. Right? So when x is 2. When x is equal to 2, right, we put 2 here, here, we put 2 there. Very simple. So you get y equal to 2 times 2 minus 1, that will give you 4 minus 1, and you get a 3. Right? Following that. Then when, when x is minus 1, okay, we substitute minus 1 so that y equal to 2 times minus 1 minus 1. 
and you get minus 2 minus 1, and you get minus 3. Then you're done. That's all. It's not difficult at all. You know, when I was your age, when I was your age, before a maths paper, I made sure that I practiced. When you see the paper, the first time you see you open it, you'll be smiling and say, I've done this before, I've done this before. You'll be smiling and you write it calmly, without any stress. Okay, the reason why you probably did this stress out because you're not well prepared. Don't ever, ever have the guts to come to a maths paper and you're not well prepared. Don't. You have to be well prepared. And the only way you can be well prepared is know your stuff. That means practicing. All right. Any question? Okay. So max, max allocation. Obviously, the y values, we get one mark for both of them. The x values, one mark for both of them. Then factorization here. That's another mark. So we have got three so far. Standard form. Now the standard form, we could give it here, okay? Or we could give it there. But the standard form also has the mark. Then the y is a subject, another mark. The last mark is for substituting correctly here. This 2x minus 1, putting it in the right place. Imagine, this is 6 marks. If you can get this simultaneous, remember, your first mark is 45. That's the minimum. Imagine the simultaneous only if you can get 6, you are left with 39 for you to pass the paper. <coughs> you haven't done the first question on the quadratic page, the you haven't done, you haven't done another question. Only left with 39. So what that means is, this 95 that I told you about last time, let me just go back a little bit. Right? Those of you who were late, I was talking about the key topics. You don't have to stress yourself about finance, about probability. That's not necessary. Okay? That's not necessary. For your paper one, this is what, these are the three topics that are going to make you cross that line and pass. With a good mark, you know those three for better. If you hear someone talking about finance, and someone talking about it, tell them that I don't care about those topics. This is this is what we make me pass. Yes, I'm serious. You know, look, the combined marks, the combined marks for finance and probability, they are less than functions and graph, less than counting. So why don't you want to waste time? Okay, when I say which time, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should not prepare for to answer probability and finance. What I'm saying is give more focus to a topic that has got more marks. Okay. Alright. Okay. So so that's no choice. Alright. <laughs> So if it, if, it, if it was you, my suggestion there is to concentrate on this main topic. I'm not saying you should neglect sequences and series, you neglect finance, you neglect quality, no. But be aware where the most of most marks are. If you want to get a higher mark, which may be that's a their thought, then you can also concentrate on uh, uh, finance and particular things. But that's just because a lot of you at the moment, some of you are starting to get paid. So, in my opinion, I would say forget about finance, forget about all this, concentrate on this thing. But if your goal is to get maybe 60% or more, okay, then be a master of finance, be a master of yeah, because you see, you find many to be read in, on the grade 11 channel. That's where it is. Huh? Yeah, for grade 11. 
you want, I can send you a link. You can you can uh, go there for great level education. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you want to cross that bridge nicely without any hiccups, more boxing. Okay. These three topics are the backbone in terms of making you pass. And pass you in the good manner. Right? Sometimes you can get like your trial examination, the probability was very easy. There are some of you who talk who to totalize the probability, like a share who totalize the probability. He's not the owner of the card number. In that case, now it becomes a bonus. Do you understand? But the three topics are the what? Major. If the prelude is easy, the probability is very dumb, the bonus, you get more marks. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It becomes a bonus. Imagine if you get more marks on those three topics, then you see that the finance you can do it easily, the probability you can do it, you come out smiling out of that paper. You, you, you know me, I don't believe that a learner can write a men's paper and not know how much they got or whether they have or not. No, I can tell you, you see, whenever I, whenever I went to me right now, I'm also studying. If I write a text, I do an assignment, I will have an idea of what I got. You cannot say, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. That. There's nothing like that. For me, there's nothing like that. You have to have an idea. All right. Nature of rules. Nature of rules. It's another aspect of quadratic equations, which is also important. Nature of rules. Okay? So, with nature of rules, the, the basic idea, okay, I'm going to teach a little bit here, is that we have what is called the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic equation. Remember, the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right? This expression here inside the square root is called the discriminant. And it is used to determine the nature of roots. By nature of roots, we are saying are the roots or the solutions. Remember, the roots are also called solutions of a quadratic equation. So these values that we are getting here, you see here, these two, they are called roots of a quadratic equation. They are also called solutions of a quadratic equation. So these roots can be real or they can be non-real. But for you guys, generally they are real numbers. Okay? So sometimes you may need to know whether are, these, are the roots equal? Are they not equal? Are they non real So we use the discriminant. This expression here is the one which tells us whether the roots are real or non real. If they are real, are they equal? Or are they the same? Are they different? To get to know that, you have got three scenarios b squared minus 4ac. If it's greater than zero, then you get real roots. This is very important. You cannot come. Or miss paper one without having an idea of what nature of roots is about. Because they will bring a question. Right? Real roots. Sometimes you can have a case where the discriminant is zero. It means you get one root twice. This is a unique case. Okay? If the discriminant is less than zero, then you get two real roots. So two non-real roots. Two non-real roots. And here you get two real roots. You have to know that. You have to know that. It's part of the first question. Remember, those 25 marks for this part here, if you can at least get 20 there, you aim for a minimum of 20, 
you get 30% for that paper, you are only left with 25. You haven't started in question, uh, question two on signals and signals, you haven't done functions and graphs, you haven't done calculus. That's why I don't understand why someone would get a very low mark. Right? So forget what happened in the trial. Now you are pushing for the final, for the finishing line. Right? You need to do something about it. Okay? So that's what you need to know. So the question says the roots of the of a quadratic equation are given by this. Right? The solutions, that, that's what, what it means. Where k is equal to those values. Okay? 1.3.1 says write down two values of k for which the roots will be rational. By rational, we are saying the roots are fractions or they are integers. Okay? That's what it means. So, you can use try and error here. Right? Let's say you start with the minus 3. Put the minus 3 there. 8 times minus 3. That will give you minus 24. But there is a 20 there. 20 minus 24 will give you minus 4. Because we have got that minus 4. We are going to get none of you. The moment you have a negative inside the square root, you will have this case. The moment you have got a negative, then you are going to have that case. We don't want that. So this is not an answer for k. Are you following what I'm doing? Then you move on to k equal to minus 2. You put minus 2 there, you get minus 16. 20 minus 16, that will give you a 4. What's the square root of 4? It's a 2. Right? So you end up with minus 5 plus minus 2. All over 6. Which means k equal to minus 2 will give you uh, rational numbers. Remember, your rational numbers are common fractions of integers. So k equal to 2 is the solution. So I can say k here equal to negative 2, right? k equal to negative 2. Then let's put minus 1. If you put minus 1 here, you get 20 minus 1. That will give you a 12. Now, can you find the square root of 12? No. So that means the moment you can put a non-perfect square inside the square root, you get what are called irrational roots. Okay? The roots that are cells. So, this one is not an answer. Let's put zero. If you put zero, you'll be left with the square root of 20. 20 is not a perfect square. So that's not an, an answer as well. Okay? Just to let you know, for us to get the uh, rational roots, we need to get a, a perfect square inside the square. Right? So let's put k equal to minus one. If you put minus one, okay, sorry, it's positive one. You end up getting 8 times 1, which is 8, plus 20, you give you 28. Is 28 a perfect square? No. So, k cannot be equal to 1. Then, let's put 2. If you put 2 there, 20 plus 16 gives you 36. So, k can be 2. Right? If you put 3, 3 times 8, that's 24. 24 plus 20, that gives you 44. Is 44 a perfect square? No. no. So k cannot be 3. Are you following? Now oh, I'm getting the answer. I'm not guessing. I'm not guessing. Right? Then 1.3.1. .1. Write down two values of k for which the roots will be done. That 1.3.2. Write down one value of k for which the roots will be non real. Okay? That one it has to be the one which, where k is negative. Which is negative what? 3. So if you put negative 3 here, you get 8 times minus 3 is minus 24. 20 minus 24, that will give you minus 4. So here, there is only one answer. Okay? So k will be equal to minus 3. Are you following? The question on, na on nature of roots it comes in different ways. But the basic idea is the discriminant, is the concept of knowing your discriminant. 
how when it changes, it affects the nature of those. You don't have to get scared because you solve this question. There's no need. Right? Then this one now, this one is an application test. Hey, if you buy an application, if you can't do it, it's fine. That's why I say if you can aim to get to those 20 marks out of the 25, that's a good mark. Okay, because sometimes you, you encounter a, a high order question and a question now. So you may not be able to uh, to do it. But at least aim for 20 out of the 25 marks. Are you following? Right. So the question says calculate A and B if you have got that. Now, this is an equation. So, what that means is you may need to manipulate what's inside the square, especially the numerator. So, we are given the square root of 7 to the power of 2014 minus 7 to the power of 2012, all over 12. This is equal to A times 7 to the power of B. But A is not a multiple of 7. Okay? So A is, is not related to 7 in any way. So to carry on here, you have to use the knowledge of exponents. I'm sure you can see that 2014 here is related to 2012. Right? I can split this up and write it with an exponent with 2012. How do I do that? Well, someone may ask, how are you going to do that? It's not difficult. So I can write 7 to the power of 2012 times 7 to the power of 2. Okay? Because if the bases are the same, if I multiply, so if I multiply them, I have to add their what? Exponent. Right? So that would be 7 times, so that's 7 to the power of 2012 all over 12. This is equal to 8 times 7 to the power of B. Then, I'm sure you can see now there that I've got a common factor. Do you see that? Yes. I have a one, the common factor. So I can write this as the square root of 7 and 7 to the power of 2012 times. 7 squared minus 1, this is all over 12. This is equal to 8 times 7 to the power. Are you following that? Now, we can simplify the 7 squared is 49. 49 minus 1 gives us what? 8. So, sorry, it will be 48, 48. So, you can end up having the square root of 7 to the power of 2012 minus 48 over 12. This is equal to A times 7 to the power of B. Okay? Now it looks like you might be thinking, how is it going to get there? It's not the best to figure out. 48 minus 12 gives us what? 4. So I can write this as 7 to the power of 2012 times 4. And this is equal to a and 7 to the power of b. Now, I want you to be aware that since we have a base of 7 here, it means on the left we still need to keep that base. Okay? The good thing is I can split this, okay, and write this the square root of 7 to the power of 12 times the square root of 4. That's equal to a and 7 to the power of b. Do you see that? Then this, you can write it as 7 to the power of. Now, remember there is a 2 there. Remember, there is a hidden 2 here, okay, which becomes our denominator. So I can write it as 7 to the power of 2012 over 2. And following that, I'm removing the square. The square root of 4 is the 2. Okay? Then I can simplify this and write this 2 times. I'm starting with that 2. I think 7 to the power of 1006. 6, right? 
is equal to a times 7 to the power of 3. Then, I can just compare now my two. My a is going to be 2, and my b is going to be 1006. So here I'll say, therefore, a is going to be 2. 2 is not a, fact, it's not a multiple of 7, and b is going to be 1006. Yes. The question was saying determine the determine the value of A and B. Let's calculate A and B. So I'll double it. This question is that its application. Exponents. Okay, and your knowledge of exponential equations. Right. 